I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Here. Councilmember Smith. Here. Councilmember Lundberg. Here. Mayor Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Pratt. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Here. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Present. Finance Director. Here. Community Development Director. Here. Police Chief. Here. Fire Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Public hearings. We have non citizens' comments on gender related items. Anybody? Okay. Consent agenda. All agenda items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval, any member of council may have an item removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Items include approval of minutes, payroll invoices, consideration of 2024, paint the town pink. At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Father, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business. We have none. Consideration of a mutual aid agreement with Clare County. The Manistee City Police Department, in partnership with the Sleigh Bell Committee, has requested assistance from the Clare County Mounted Division. Clare County will assist with the police presence and crowd control on Saturday, December 7th, 2024, during and after the Manistee Victorian Sleigh Bell Parade. At this time, council will take action to approve the Clare County Mutual Aid Agreement. Is there a motion? I will make that motion. Sorry. Any discussion? Hey, Chief, how many years has, has, has Clare helped us with this? I just, just out of curiosity. Uh, since before I was the Chief, uh, Councilman Bachman was that year when you were the Chief? Were not, Clare was not doing it when I was here. So know. probably starting 18 or 19. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of approving a proposal and change order in the amount of 48800 for the rehabilitation of the Ramsdale Theater pillars and amending the capital improvement fund budget by 57800 the Ramsdale Theater Pillar rehabilitation has been budgeted for the last year, several years. The city did not receive any response when it bid out in April. The city solicited a proposal to complete the work from the qualified contractor that currently restoring the fire station. The proposal was for 488, which will come from the previous unspent budget amount of 35,000 plus an additional capital improvement plan. At this time, council could take action to approve the proposal and change the order in the amount of 48,800 for the rehabilitation of the Ramsdale Theater pillows and authorize the mayor to sign the amendment to the owner engineer agreement and amend the capital improvement fund budget by 57,800. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, just wondering, do we know a timeline for when they're hoping to start that and get that completed? Most likely in the spring, I would think. Uh, they want to do the work after they do complete the work on the fire station first. Mm -hmm. And so they could possibly do it in the fall, but we don't want them doing it in too cold a weather. So right. it'll probably be spring. Right. Thank you. I, I got a quick question. Mm -hmm. Just the way that this is written, we have an unspent budget of 35000 and it was 48800 8. So are we just approving the difference? So the $35,000 we did not budget in fiscal year 25 because we thought we were going to complete the project in fiscal year 24, okay. which didn't happen. So that money was still sitting there, okay. but then the bids came in higher than what um, we had anticipated, plus we have engineering fees. So that's the difference. The change order is the 48.8, and then we have $9,000 in engineering fees, so that's what the total budget amendment's for. Okay. All right, that's all I had. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. 
Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of a change order for the fire station masonry improvements. As of as the May 21st, 2024 council meeting, council took action to award the fire station masonry improvements to Borner Restoration in the amount of 199,939. The original contract included removal of paint from the exterior bricks, minimal tuck tuck pointing and repainting the fire station. The change order will complete the fire station's exterior by completing window and door restoration as well as tuck point the entire brick exterior and eliminate painting the brick. The cost of this work is 21, I'm sorry, 261,498, increasing the contract to 461,434. This amount <coughs> will be within the current bond funds for the fire station and improvement. At this time, council could take action to approve a 260, 1,498 change order from the additional fire station masonry improvement and authorize the mayor to sign the amendment owner engineer agreement. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah, um, well, I understand the bond. For the public's purpose, Ed, could you just explain the status of the bond and where this money comes from? Sure, Council Member Bachman. So the city let uh, a 2020 capital improvement bond for several million dollars that funded like maybe, I don't know, 12 or 15 different projects. And we've been working through all those. We allocated a little over $600,000 for the fire station project. So when we bid that out originally, um, we didn't, you know, it was way over bid. So then they broke it into sub pieces. And so the masonry part was the one. And now um, they're doing an addition to do some of the work that they anticipated in the original project. And that's what this change order is primarily for, plus the change in the uh, tuck pointing for the building, which is more extensive than what they had anticipated, less the coating that they're not going to paint it now. How much is left in that bond? So we've got um, the 199 uh, there now. And then how much is the change order portion on the menu? Two. Yeah, so there's going to be about. Um, Maybe another 125, 130, something like that. We've got the engineering costs. We got to figure in there too, though. What is the final look of the fire station anticipated to be? That would so, be a chief turn question. Yeah. I, so. Yeah. Okay. So just a, a quick little test on this. So we got the fire station improvements. That's part of the 2021 bid. Uh, what was supposed to be done with, when that entire bid was come together is they wanted to remove the chimney, fix the roof. They wanted to remove all the paint and bricks, repaint the doors, windows, and replace all that, freshen all that up, and also do site work, the front parking lot, uh, the front approach, the rear parking lot, and fix a lot of drainage problems, water drain, uh, water, storm water is not draining away from the building, which is eroding the foundation. So what happened was in 2023, they put out, um, in December of 2023, they put out a bid for a uh, general contractor to complete all that work. The bids came back with only one bidder, and that was $2.1 million to do the uh, entire scope of work. That was way over the price of what we had allotted for that. So what we decided to do is break it into three different phases. And it was a masonry phase, a door window phase, and a site work to phase. The idea behind that is by uh, making it more appealing for specific contractors to bid on separate packages that we would get more competitive bidding. So that's what we did. Uh, the first step was the masonry phase. That was the most important one of fixing the bricks. The bricks were deteriorating because moisture was being caught behind the paint. The freezing and thawing was destroying, was rapidly destroying the building. So when the, the masonry phase was sent out, we got three different bids. The lowest bid is what we went with, with the 199 with Bordner Restoration. All right. And due to the favorable amount of that bid and the funds we had left, we were able to go right directly to phase two. But phase two, we had like a couple of different options on how we could proceed with that. Uh, with the, the, the price that Borner Restoration gave us, the additional window and door restoration uh, was that they could completely remove all of the paint from the building. Their paint removal process was so good that we were, we were able to recognize that, you know, not painting, repainting the building might be an option. Another thing that we realized when they were removing the paint was there was going to be a lot more tuck pointing to the building that was going to be needed. That original bids, that was the contractors only bidding 10% of the tuck pointing. While removing the paint, there was going to be additional cost with that tuck pointing. 
So what they did is they came up with a change order for the addition of 261 for a total of 461 to complete both phases one and two, all right? So the benefits of this proposal and what we're going through here is the no paint option that we're able to do by not repainting um, our historical architect. They advise that that's actually the best option for the brick. The brick of that age, the best thing to do is to leave it uncovered so it's able to breathe. So that's gonna provide the best health for the building overall. And we're never gonna need to strip and repaint it and go through this process again. All right, 100% tuck pointing. By um, us being able to completely fix all of the tuck pointing on the building, that's sailing it up, making it much more weather resistant for this. And then uh, we've, we've received a ton of positive remarks about how the building looks without any of the paint on it too. So, um, and really how it all breaks down for the fire station improvements by breaking it into three separate bids. The 2023 bid, if we were to break that into the phases, that's a $2.1 million bid. For the masonry repair, they were saying 650,000 by us breaking it up. We got it down to 199. All right, the window and trim package of that first initial bid, we got 600,000. By breaking it out, it's only 89 for that. However, we did have to increase the tuck pointing. We could erase the paint for the total eight change order of the 261. So the total project cost went from 1.2 million from that first bid to $461,000. So that's how we feel we're, we're on the right track with, with what we're doing now. What's the driveway approach? The driveway approach, so that would be, Darn. That's it, right there, Blake. That would be phase three. Phase three is still needed. That's something that we still have to work through in that. Is there money that yet? In left that, over for that? There will be some funds left over for the, from the bond. However, there's not going to be enough to cover the entire project. Approach is yes. a mess. It is. Rack. Is that originally you were going to do something with the stairway going up here that's pulled away from the wall and the kitchen. And those are all off the table now? And that, so the interior improvements, those, we do have plans with fixing those. Um, that's more of internal with uh, Mark Hansen's uh, gonna come work in there. Spicers came and looked at the floorboards and the floor joists there. Uh, and they, they spoke with Mark Hansen on his plans to um, improve that part or fix those floor joists. Down so, there. yes. Okay. Yeah, those are the, the only floor, yes. Wasn't there a plan to redo the kitchen as well? Redo the kitchen, no plans to redo the kitchen. I did put something in the capital improvement budget for two years down the road for to set aside funds for to redo the kitchen. That gap in the steps and that'll all be fixed by Mark Hansen where the steps are pulled away from the wall. Is there a big gap on the left side going up those stairway from the first floor to the second floor? Yes, that's the plan. That's part of Mark Hansen fixing that? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. The, the floor joists, is that the part where you and I were in that we were talking about, is that? Yeah. Okay. So the floor joists, there there used to be a wooden basement in the entire uh, uh, fire station. The wooden basement was removed, put in cement <coughs> floors. That has to do to the heavy fire trucks. You know, we can't have that with that. So once that is it, they left a portion of it where that stairwell is, has wooden floor joists. The main problem with that is, is we don't have drainage, the proper stormwater drainage away from the building. So the stormwater <coughs> coming down, it's getting in the broken concrete and going right down and keeping the foundation wet. That wet foundation is, rating, is uh, rotting the floor joists. So phase three with fixing the, um, the site improvements has all the stormwater uh, drainage in there to, <coughs> to get the water away from the building and to keep our foundation dry. After we get our foundation dry, that's when we start working on repairing the floor joists. Is that back door get redesigned or is it going to stay the way it is? Which back door? That back door that opens for the ambulance. And that, we're working on prices with that. That is in the docket to get repaired. Uh, Borner Restoration was looking for different companies to, garage door companies to come and repair that. That's becoming quite a challenge to get someone, uh, to, to get a door with that size in there. But yes, that's part of uh, this process in the bond of I mean, we had talked about yeah. putting it on a trail like a barn door and motorizing it on the side rather than folding it like it does now and maybe be in a different plan. But I'm, I'm yeah, no, there, there is some few different options. We're exploring that now because finding a swing door the way it, you know, it's designed now, that's becoming a huge challenge. Custom built, yeah. So okay. there's lots of challenges with the building, that's okay. for sure. Chief, I just had one quick thing, um, maybe two. Um, one is the the dry the stair the stairwells where it's separated. We did look at that really closely. It's that is actually it's stable. 
it's it pulled away probably early on, but it's it's stable. And so we had gotten a price of like ninety thousand dollars to basically rebuild that second wall, a very small section, and we just didn't think it was worth that investment. Um, I don't think Mark will nece necessarily fix that gap. We can talk about how we do it, but it, you know, it's, that portion's stable. The down below the joist, we definitely need to address. It won't pull away the wall from the steps. It's depth from the wall. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay. Um, yeah. Be honest. I mean, it's. I would say what we were seeing outside the walls plumb. You know, so it looks like it would have been more of the steps away from the wall, but it's it's hard to tell. I'm really happy to see work happening. I know it's been kind of a drag for a couple of years here getting this with the with the bond, so I'm really happy to see something happen. But I just don't want this kind. Of, I know I'm leaving, but that approach needs to be fixed, and the kitchen needs to be fixed. And yeah. And that was the one other thing too is on the approach we are looking at doing is we have a, a project coming up next year, right? Yes. And um, it has a lot of concrete flat work in it for approaches. It's um it's the work we're doing on the truck route, and so we're what we're really looking to do is trying to work with that contractor to do the approach work because we'll have a good qualified contract. Is that the DPW kind of work the DPW does with flat work? That's quite. It's a just it's a lot because of the weight. Yeah, and it's just it's big areas like that are tricky. I mean, they got some very especially recently they got some very good. Okay. Plans. Maybe they could, but the other part that Chief mentioned was the drainage is a big deal. Right. We really need to get that in there because the foundation's wet. So thank you both. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of agreement with Granicus for short term rental data. Collection Granicus offers a software platform with modules that specialize in short term rental data collection and can help identify short term rentals addresses, monitor occupancy, assist with host compliance and education. The basic module will help to identify addresses and provide online staff training for an annual cost of 6903. At this time, council will take action to approve an agreement with Granicus for short term rental data collection for a term of one year in the amount of 6903 contingent on final city attorney approval. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. No second. Any discussion? I have a question. Well, a couple questions maybe. So this amount seems lower than what they had quoted you guys prior to me being on council. I think it was like 9,500. But when I went back and looked at that, it looked like part of that 9,500 original quote was that they would send out the letters and things like that. So I'm assuming that's still part of this and maybe the cost just went down because of technology and things like that. So in this time, Tracy was kind of working with Granicus. She asked for the very basic model or, um, for this, so I, I know that will give us. You said um, a year back to find out yes. short-term rentals. So we'll get some data that I think will better inform us about the numbers we're dealing with. And um, okay. you know, we talked about a percentage versus yeah. numbers, so I think that'll help us. But I think it helps too that we have a building official in house. So at, a, at the time, I think we might have had safe built. So I think we can utilize existing staff for some of these things. As far as like the compliance end, I guess, then are they going to work with our staff and make recommendations on that and city staff would be the one sending out the letter and stuff? So the basic package is for um, training and address identification only. The compliance, um, helping um, track revenue, um, those things would be additional modules. This is so that you have the specific addresses so the staff would be the ones that would be sending anything out. If okay. you want additional packages, they're happy to talk about those, but this was just the basics. And if I may too, I think, you know, until we have an ordinance, we won't be doing those types of things. So I thought this was a good approach to get this basic one first. In October, the first meeting, we can have that discussion again. And then perhaps on the 15th, we have the ordinance in front of you for potential adoption. And I know Bill did, um, the council also get the packet of the guide to short-term rentals that I included? Uh, they did not, so I can send that to them. Okay. Yeah, I just think that there are some helpful things within that guide, too. It was the, it was oh, was it in the packet? Okay. Yeah. It's in the yeah. yeah. How often? Oh, sorry. No, I'm fine. Thanks, sir. Thanks. How often is the data updated? Is it once a month, every six months? No, you can, um, they'll do it weekly if you want. 
Oh, sorry. But it's um, traditionally people want to do it monthly, but right. they can do it by week. And that might be something, um, well, the staff would pull that based on if we're in the summer months when it's high volume, you right. may want to do weekly as opposed to, you know, November, you might. You know, and correct me if I'm wrong, went through the website myself a little bit today. Is it they look, are they, they're, they're about a 84%, 80 to 84% catch rate? Is that what they're calling it as far as? So there's still going to be upwards of 20% that we're not going to catch even with Granicus? Um, there is a plus or minus. Mm -hmm. I have to go back and look okay. to see that exact amount because I don't, I can't recall that exact amount. Okay. But yeah, there is a plus or minus. So I'm just wondering if, because we talked about either doing a percentage or numbering it, the amount that we have, but grandfathering in the ones that are already inspected and registered like give them a time frame to so everyone that has a short-term rental under what we had originally drafted and we're still in the process of looking based on input from the last meeting um, anyone that has a short-term rental would need to to register and pay the registration by date, a certain date by a certain date yes, yes. okay so once we do that, then this will start, this will kick in and show us. It will go back and look at anybody, it's not who would register with us, who had short-term rentals out there and was advertising and renting their units. But if they're already registered and in compliance, why do we care if they were back? There? Well, this will start before they register and then we'll know if somebody doesn't register. Well, and potentially, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, if we have somebody who's operating a short-term rental right now and they're paying homestead taxes and they haven't declared it as, uh, you know, non-homestead, we could go back and get that tax revenue. I could file that with the state and ask them for I that, don't, correct? Potentially, I would give that to Molly and she could yeah. report it. So I think part of what this does, it's a voluntary process for people to register during our window to register so it's sort of on a good faith effort that we would say sure everybody's registered but do we really know who's registered or not so this would give us data that yes people have registered no they haven't they haven't registered so then we move forward on compliance and fines and, and yeah. if I could clarify one thing though with the homestead non homestead mm -hmm. talking with Molly about this if someone lived there for six months in a day they could be homestead so that's kind of a difference and if you just rent out your house for basically any time less than a month mm -hmm. it's considered a short-term rental so right I'm just I think there was a situation where Molly went back and got because a gentleman right. had went out of state like he lives out of state he had one for three years and he had never changed it yeah. So she did file with the state, and I think they awarded that money. Well, that's a significant amount of money when you figure the cities went without theirs and the schools went without their portion of that extra 18 mils. I mean, that's real dollars that make a difference in projects and in a community. So help, help me understand here, because um, are we doing this because we want to catch people who aren't registered? Because I thought this was all about making sure our ordinance was, uh, you know, valid and um, was valuable to everyone surrounding it. But it sounds to me like we're just trying to catch people who don't have it. And I don't know if that's really what I, we want to I do. think it's a combination of things. I think it's making sure that people register and that we have compliance, making sure that we know who has short-term rentals and doesn't so that we can better decide upon either a percentage or a number and making a, our ordinance effective. So I think it's multi-layered if you give them a grace period and say you need to get it registered by this and you're going by you know good faith so what's matter. the point of spending this money to catch the other ones because we live in a small town like everybody knows everybody's business so somebody's going to talk and say hey you know are they registered are they registered so I don't I mean I think that you have hard data yeah. as opposed to opinions of people that may or may not have accurate information had a lot of people complaining about short-term rental, lack of too many, not too many. I think this gives us the first piece mm -hmm. of the puzzle to start dialing in and making a difference and making a rule. If we don't have hard data, 
we're all we're nice. So we all know everybody else is bidding this, but it's not on paper someplace, and we can't say for sure. So I personally support the project, and I think it's a good idea. I did not the first time it was brought to our council, but I think that I've been getting more calls and more pressure, and I, I see the issue differently than I did back then. So I personally am going to support this because I think it's a good piece of the puzzle to collect data, and I certainly expect that more modules will come back to us as, as we build this piece. So I think it's a good first step. You know, I support the, the idea of, of looking into the regulation of short term rental, but I, I, I question the, the usefulness of the single module. I mean, down the, down, down, the, down the road, adding the other ones for compliance and for communication, absolutely. I guess, you know, and granted, I'm in the IT field, so I get it, and they were, nobody's going nobody's to tell you what, what the algorithm is, but is, are they really doing anything besides crawling, going through um, you know, Airbnb and VRBO websites? Is that something that we can do in-house and save you know, seven thousand dollars? And even if we, I, <laughs> so I will, I will just say I think it's I think it's a, something that would take up a lot of time to be checking it, and I think having a report from um, a software that's kind of looking actively looking for it and basing it off of that would be perhaps there's not a subjectivity. Did they check this day? Were they off? I just think it kind of makes a better process for for looking at it and tracking it and getting good data, so. Did we look into host compliance on how much they would charge? I'm just wondering why we only have one estimate. The, the platform host compliance? No. I just went with Granicus. Um, I knew that Air D&D without Air. D&D, &D, yeah. <laughs> DNA, <laughs> DNA, <laughs> Air D&D. DNA. Um, without addresses was approximately 10,000. So this was a lower um, threshold listening to what you had comment okay. at the last meeting. So I can go back and get additional bids if that's. I was just curious. Yeah, I, I looked into air, I think air DNA, whatever it was called, and it was just, just about 9,000 okay. I talked to, I talked to. Are we only signing this for a year? Is it only yes. a year? Yes. Mm -hmm. We can't do like six months, we have to do a year? It, it's a year contract that they have. It's a standard agreement. And I'll just add, when I, when we looked at this the first time and I contacted the communities, they, they found it helpful. So the thought was we'd have some hard data to talk about this more intelligently at the next meeting. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of commission appointment. The Housing Commission has taken action to advertise among their residents the one resident vacancy <clears throat> term. This is a mayoral appointment which requires a motion, second and council voted support. The following applications have been received. Kelly Walsh, 106 Park Avenue. Tammy Elkire, 237 6th Avenue, number 128. William Hall, 237 6th Avenue, number 517. Sue. Mage Chirac, sorry about that, 1204 Cypress Street. At this time, Mayor and Council could take action to appoint, as noted above. I would like to appoint Kelly Walsh, 106 Park Avenue, to the Housing Commission as a resident member for a five-year term. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. Other, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Um, we were supposed to have a report from Mr. John Halke of the Tree Commission. He is not here, so we are going to skip over that one. So citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens in attendance to comment on municipal services, activities, or other areas of city involvement. Limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. Mr. Gamble. Thank you, Mayor. Just um, as you know, the, on Thursday we have interviews for city attorney, um, so 6 to about 8.30. Um, the Parks Commission will be meeting in the marina, so just an update for everyone. Also, the um, net shed has been removed from the Riverwalk. We had an emergency repair to pull that, add some stabilization at the Riverwalk, so um, soup and cranes performing the work. Um, they expect the piles to come in this week, and then they'll work on uh, making sure the river walk is stable. Thank you. Ms. Waldo.
So I sent all of you, oh, sorry, good evening, Teresa Waldo, Community Development Director. I sent all of you an email this afternoon and hopefully you'll be able to check that and make sure that you receive the CHILL grant timeline. So I'm up here with some great news. Um, the timeline just says when the applications will be ready. They're gonna be ready Monday, September 23rd and everyone's gonna have three weeks to fill out the application and then they will be due back on Friday, October 11th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be drop off or through email and the person that is um, on the application does not have to be the one to drop that off. Anyone can drop that off, um, but we will not be accepting them any earlier than 8 a.m. and it will be on the um, police department lower level will be taking those applications. So good news. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Anybody else somewhere? Mr. Bachman. Mr. Smith. I'm going to steal some thunder here, I think. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, got a, just a couple things. Great job by the city staff, as well as TJ's for the block party and the marina boat show and the century boat show. Um, you know, it's just, uh, I got my notes here. It's in, also to the fire department and the mayor for the supporting the burn victim uh, fundraiser. <coughs> that was really great to see. Um, it was really a weekend in Manistee that everybody can be proud of. We, you know, I was out... Uh, with you know on the on saturday evening it's really great to see everybody down there a lot of people and nothing but good reviews and and do it again and do it more so it's uh it was just a, fan, a fantastic uh fantastic weekend to be a to be a steen or however you, however you want to call it but um other than that that's all i got that's not great um, yeah, I just want to put out one little plug. Um, I was at the conference this past weekend. We'll talk more about it later, but um, I did want to say that one thing I learned while I was there um, was that on September 28th, it's National Neighbor, um, <laughs> whatever, um, and I challenge all of us to go say hi to a neighbor that we haven't already spoken to, get to know them, become friends with them. I think that makes a difference in the big world, so I just want to put a plug out to... Uh, on the 28th, National Neighbor Day. Spread. Um, I just had a couple of things. I've had a couple of people ask, um, does our code enforcement officer have an email that's available online? Or how do, like, do we want people to do see click fix? If they have a direct concern, do you want them to email him? Rather you can than... do it either way. Okay. Um, see click fix is an option, but I can double check to see if his uh, email has been published on our city website. Okay. Okay, I just had somebody ask and I, I just told them to do some click fix in the meantime because I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, so I attended the last NRBC meeting and one of the things that came up was that they have been waiting for seven months for legal to get back with them on something. So I'm just wondering if we can help kind of move that along. You know what that is? The mural. Mm. because uh, it's about the mural wall and like right now I mean I'm not a very tall person but when I walk up First Street Hill I have branches hitting me in the face you have to walk around it so it, it sounds like the NRBC wants to take care of that which would be wonderful but in the meantime it seems like it's kind of unintentionally created a blight nuisance issue going on so I, I was just a little surprised when they said that they've been waiting seven months so I just thought maybe I could put a plug in to kind of help move that along so um, and then the last thing I had was just a comment about how positive the black party was and um, a lot of people commented on uh, the root beer floats so I'm not sure if they were the the best in the world but they were pretty amazing to most people so thank you Mr. Grabowski no, how long is that thing going to sit in front of the <clears throat> last time it was for quite a while um, I can get an update. I know he's working on, I know Mark's working on the window sills. I can get an update. You know, it, it does a little bit and then it stops, and I think it's time he gets it done. Yeah. Um, then I was going to ask about the rosemary. You still have that junk in the front, the orange boards or whatever they are. I think we've been yelling about that for 30 years. And they did redo the windows. and. So they bent the cord on different tickets, and, and now and then he had a, a scaffolding up there during last week. I don't know if people are doing with that now. 
So I was just wondering when they're going to get those. I mean, everybody, even Harper Gillies had commented on it a while a year ago. He said it was like hell. So I think it's time they, they take that junk out of there. Also, I was, gonna, I was hoping Jeff would have been here tonight. I asked him last time about that on 9th Street off of Cypress when he goes down the hill. These people, whoever owned that property, had dumped in the sand. The sand was getting bigger and bigger, and there's a way hole down below. Uh, where I don't know if they're trying to fill this in or what they're doing, but there's other junk in there. There's realtor signs. There's all kinds of people throwing stuff in there. 9th Street and where exactly? It's 9th Cypress. Cypress okay. comes off the highway. That's still Cypress. And then 9th Street leads off of that. Okay. So I thought it was kind of, you know, I don't understand why we're letting them just pour sand down. Um, also, are the sidewalks done being for this year? Are we still working on them or what? Because Maple Street is hell, you know, between eight yeah. and nine. And Jeff's on vacation this week, but I can find out. I don't think they started yet this year, but. Okay. I know we talked about it earlier. And then I talked to Chris about the storage bins on 12th Street. Uh, they did cut the grass outside, but inside, the weeds are higher than, I mean, if you walk by, the weeds are really high. They need to tear out that old dirt in there and put some black dirt so the grass will grow. The trees they planted are all dead. Uh, they were supposed to have three trees according to their contract, which I did. So I think it's time to do something with that. Oh, and then that house still up on Cypress on Maple Street for Josh. The people down 9th Street, I walk with the dog every day, and they are yelling. At night, this guy is just revving up those cars, fixing them. Uh, I guess they got the fence fixed where the dogs are sticking their heads through. Now it's the cats are coming. Here we are, and I told her to call you Sunday morning. And I wish you'd call. It's going to be a constant issue, as you know, from years past. You go there, get compliance, two weeks later, you're back. So it's going to be a, a constant challenge for the court enforcement officer. Yeah, he said it is revenue. The neighbors way down 9th Street can hear it and see it going on. Yeah, if, if you talk to them, we have to call 911 so we know what's happening. It, really, it would really help us out. Well, I, I told him to call. You know, I, I tried to tell him so. Well, you guys have a, can keep a record. Sure. So that's, I tried my best. I'm retired, you know. <laughs> also, I just wanted to know, uh, I did go over to the fire department and give the fire chief money for their event. So I didn't want to be ignored. I didn't know that we weren't going to all give it. So I just wanted to make sure the chief was happy getting money. So, yeah. <laughs> So as far as the Rootberg Globe uh, fundraiser, it was a lot of fun. It was a, a big success. I think we sold uh, over 200 root beer floats. I don't know if they were the world's best, but they were definitely the messiest. There's a learning curve to making those, so <laughs> probably have 2,000 napkins handed out. But it was a good success. We did raise some money. Uh, we're going to save it uh, for a, a council meeting or two where uh, the uh, the, the person from the Great Lakes Burn Camp, he's going to come up here and we're going to present him a check for it. But it was a great success. We had a ton of support from the community, and uh, we all had a lot of fun. So thank you. I talked to some people from Pennsylvania, and I learned all about fracking. I mean, they, he worked on it, this guy. He, his wife even walked away. She didn't want to hear it no more. But he was really quite interesting. There's a politician telling about fracking now. It was something to learn about. Yep. Great event. We had a good time. Thank you. But more to come on that. Thank you. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Where am I? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Consideration of a closed session. Manager evaluation. City Manager William Gamble has a closed session this evening as permitted by Open Meetings Act Section 8A discussion of the City Manager's evalu annual evaluation. At this time, council will take action to proceed to close sessions under section 8A of Open Meetings Act. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. I'll, I'll second. Other, would you please take roll? Council Member Bachman. <coughs> yes. Council Member Smith. <coughs> yes. Council Member Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Okay, so we are back in open session. Okay, I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.